All right, so in this quick little video, we're gonna show you how I go about making what's called a color key for the backgrounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the video. And what you're seeing here is basically just a rough that I created just using some pencil and pen, uh, really small. It's the way I tend to like to work. Um, one thing I will make a note of on this is that I was painting on my Cintiq, which isn't color matched to my main monitor. My Cintiq needs to be calibrated, and I didn't have the ability to calibrate it before I made this video. So you're going to notice that the blue in the center there is really, really saturated. Um, but I'll tweak this later on and adjust for it. And what I'm doing right there is just kind of blocking out the center. Um, again, kind of on this UPA style, I'm blocking out the center, central color that's going to kind of highlight and outline my main building. And now I'm roughing in those sides, and I'm trying to use kind of a very def uh, very uh, unsaturated purple, or desaturated purple, I should say. Just creating a quick little outline around the building so I can use that same green color. Uh, and the green is going to be the dominant color, I think, in this key. So the goal here is not to make something that's really kind of uh, finished. Uh, it's really just about blocking colors and trying to understand how the colors are going to work. And I want to make sure that these signs pop, so I'm hitting them with white. Um, it's actually not a pure white, it's kind of a yellowy off-white. Nothing in these is, is going to be pure white. Kind of add some of the purple highlight, and again we're, we're working with a limited uh, kind of palette in terms of my color choices here purposefully. Um, so here I'm going around just kind of cleaning up some of the, uh, the blue that's going to be for the windows. Right now it matches the uh, blue in the background, again it's really saturated. Um, but I'm going to go through and desaturate all of this here in a few minutes. Kind of putting some uh, purple uh, outline around the undies sign at the top. Again, just kind of anchor it in. My main colors here are going to be purple, blue, and green. And now I'm masking out these clouds um, because I want them to make that kind of, again, kind of that off white color. And this is something that's kind of a fun little trick. Um, just kind of masking those off and then later on again when I do the finished version these will look a lot more clean because uh, it won't have the uh, pen outline around them but I want to go back and finish those here in a moment so now I'm just kind of darkening in kind of making this olive green that's going to serve as my shadow almost on the underside of this roof line and now I'm going through and kind of thinking to myself what else is going to have that trim color to it and as I'm doing this, I'm already not liking what I have simply because um, I feel it, it feels a bit heavy handed when there's too much of that olive green. It feels too dark. Uh, so in a second here, you're going to see me rip that off. And then I'm going to go through and again, I'll copy it onto a different layer. Later, I'm going to pull it back up and subdue it just a little bit. Before I do that, though, let's work in the doors here. And they're going to kind of be a, a, a kind of a burnt orange color. Just kind of playing with my saturation values, playing with the color. Um, I will note that I am not a Photoshop master. Um, I know how to paint kind of these down and dirty uh, paintings in here, which is again kind of why the style works for what we're trying to do right now. So there's probably a lot better ways of doing certain things that I'm doing, um, but this is just the way I tend to like to work. So I'm trying to work non-destructive if possible here, which means that I'm using kind of um, alpha layers and I'll use other matte layers and whatnot so I don't destroy everything. Um, and I can always get rid of those layers and, and kind of throw them away uh, and get all the original stuff back. So here I'm just kind of putting in some of these lines and these are representational of maybe I have some plants uh, back behind there. Again, I'm going to use the same thing for some of these bricks, just kind of putting them in with some of this green. Um, just some of those lines and, and this will all be cleaned up like I said later on in the in the final version that I'm going to be painting so this is all just to figure out the colors and figure out kind of what looks good and what works so there I kind of taken down the windows just a little bit and now I'm going to go in and get the uh, the roof line here the, the shingles in the top I'm starting off with kind of that dark olive green I'm going to rip this off and I'm going to try to add just maybe just a little bit of gray into it to differentiate it a bit more Maybe something like so. Again, so it's subtle, but it's different than the uh, just just enough to sell it. But again, staying within that family of greens that I'm establishing for myself. Now I'm going around. I hit some yellow highlights there because the door handles and whatnot. Again, it's kind of hard to see on this because this is actually a really small image. Um, and when I'm painting this. Right now I'm at 200% uh, while I'm painting it, but it, but it's not very big. I think it's like a thousand by 
uh, 600 pixels or 800 pixels, something like that. What I'm doing here is thinking about the underwear in the main windows that I'm going to want to see a little bit more clearly than some of the other uh, pairs of underwear. They're going to be kind of behind the glass. And this kind of pulls those two at the bottom to the forefront because those are kind of our hero pair that they're going to be looking at. Um, so I'm adding some white. Um, again, kind of taking that off white from before. And I'm going to go back in and subdue this here in a second. Here I'm kind of adding some red in for the sign because I really want that sign to pop. Um, so red. There's also going to be a little bit of orange and yellow, I'm thinking, up in the, uh, the grand opening sign up here for the flags. Okay, just, just to add a little bit of fun to it, a little bit of variation. If everything is the same, it starts to become too much the same. There's not enough contrast, too much affinity. So just that little bit, you can see how that pops now when, you, when you're up on top of it. Kind of subduing this just a little bit more. Um, and then eventually I'm going to go in, I'm going to add some... Uh, darkening around the edges again just to kind of give a hint of the interior kind of sell the fact that it's behind glass just a little bit more just kind of rough this in then again I'll knock it back down And here I'm going into the clouds, and this is something really interesting that I saw in a lot of the Inspector cartoons where they go through and they actually, um, again, the cloud will just have white. Initially, it won't have an outline on it later on, uh, but go in and add these swirly patterns and whatnot in the interior of it, again, using kind of that the uh, dirty paintbrush stroke that you'll see throughout. Just kind of hitting some of these cobblestones a little bit just to pop them. And then this is a fun little technique of just using some of these lines to identify what a shrub might be or flowers. Again, not drawing them in. Um, and here I start to play with this tree. And what you'll see here in a moment is that while I kind of like the, uh, the overall idea of what I did with the tree there, it just kind of feels out of place where it sits in the frame. It was something that I roughed in kind of in the last second when I was doing the initial sketch. Um, so I'm going to end up kind of moving it off to the side here and eventually I just delete it outright because um, I didn't think it was fitting the overall composition very well. It's not to say I won't add trees back in later on, but for right now um, it was complicating things and I wanted to get rid of it just to simplify. It's the one thing I'm finding with all of these is that simple is actually hard. You have to think in terms of what do I really need, what don't I need, um, to give it this kind of nostalgic feel. Um, it, it's actually proven to be more difficult than I thought it would. So here I'm going through and I'm basically ripping a hole in there because I'm going to use the same type of technique where maybe I have some junipers or something like that here um, where the tops are going to be kind of breaking across and then I just kind of darken them down a little bit. So again, you see parts of them in certain spots, uh, but then they kind of die off. Kind of tweaking out some of the color. Again, as I'm playing with this, um, I'm working on a non-calibrated uh, Cintiq. So when I actually finished this and I took it over to my other monitor and looked at it, it was way too saturated. Uh, so I ended up dialing it back down just a little bit, especially that blue in the background. So now what I'm doing is just trying to figure out for myself, okay, how much uh, breakup do I need to put across this blue in the back? And again, I kind of like it when the colors are fairly solid uh, for this look, but they do need a little bit of breaking to them. So here I'm just adding some grunge and I'm going to go ahead and subdue this quite a bit just to knock it back. But there's a little bit of something going on, um, which I think kind of adds to the overall feel. Here I'm using my splatter brush going in and just, again, kind of hitting little sections here and there. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of make these a little bit brighter. So it does the opposite effect is what the grunge in the bottom was doing. And then I'm going to take the, uh, again, the splatter brush and go back in and hit some around the sign. Um, I, I like when some of the splatter carries out and it's specific to certain elements. Here I'm kind of adding just a little bit on the interior. And again, just kind of working around. What's fun about this style is that a lot of what I'm doing right here is going to translate directly to the final painting when I go to do that. Um, again, if you're spending too much time getting in on the details, I think it starts to take away from the overall feel that we're going for. Uh, so it's about working pretty rough and pretty quick. here I'm just kind of breaking up some of that sky in the background. You can imagine later on I'll break this up into layers so we can have the clouds kind of moving across if we would like. 
Um, I did try an experiment here where I was going through and trying to see, well, can I add something to the top to kind of break it up just a little bit? Because I thought maybe it was a bit too much green. We're almost never going to see this thing as wide as what I have right now. Um, and for the most part, we're going to be up really close on the lower half of the building. So a lot of this upper stuff you'll never see. But again, I want to make sure if we do pull back, it's got something going on there that makes it a little bit interesting. Um, so here I'm just using that same basic technique and kind of breaking the sky. And except this time I go ahead and I lighten it just a little bit so it gets lighter as it goes up. But it's still maintaining that overall green, uh, which I think is just really kind of fun. So now to add a little something to it, I'm a, I'm a fan of taking things from, from real life in terms of, in this case, I'm taking some pe uh, paper texture um, that had a nice little quality to it and kind of overlaying that on top here using a bit of a multiply trick, desaturating it um, just to punch the backgrounds a little bit. And eventually I want to do something similar to the brick. And this was something that I saw in watching a lot of the inspector cartoons um, was the way that they use texture. Um, my guess is that they were using palette knives and things like that to add a lot of it. But since we're working digitally, I'm lifting some of this from um, other images that I have that have like little cracks and breaks and scrapes just to add a little bit of life. And here I'm kind of getting rid of some of it because too much of it starts to make it feel kind of dirty. Um, and I think this is starting to feel that way right now, so there might be too much of it. Um, but again, for this, for this little tiny painting, I think it's starting to help set the tone and the feel. And here's where I've gone through and I've color corrected it just a bit more. And you can see now that the blue is way desaturated from where it was before. But after looking at it for just a little bit longer, um, I went through and decided to strip out the city entirely and just kind of had the building on its own uh, and put a brick wall kind of around the entire thing. Again, just in the name of simplicity, um, I felt like the buildings were getting a little bit too much in the background. And just by adding some more of this kind of line approach that you see there with the blue and the darker green, it hints at something back there. Um, but again, we're not going to be super wide on this particular shot ever, so we wouldn't really see too much of the city to begin with. So I think it's better just to play this one a little bit uh, more simple and play it safe. So uh, hopefully this video helped kind of show you how I go about the process of coloring or painting these keys. Um, the next step for me would be to jump in and paint the actual background.